What is up everyone, Nick here, and today we're going to be upgrading the wiring in my Iron Man suit. For those of you who don't know, last video we took a look at the arms and the upper body of my 3D printed Iron Man suit. But I decided to leave out the forearms and the hands from the video because today we're going to be breaking them down and completely upgrading them. Hello Mr. Python, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, don't even, it's fine, don't even worry about it. Just, just yoink. Yes, I ripped off the metal man's arm, it's fine. Last video we ended at the elbow, now we're gonna go further down. So along the front and the back of the forearm, there are tiny elastics with buckles at the end of them. So if I just reach in here and just, there we go. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Oops. Now let's look at the forearm. So the arm itself is quite simple. Uh, there's a little bit of padding on the inside to keep the arm on my forearm because I have pretty narrow wrists, so the padding helps keep it in place. But this inner forearm plate has been the bane of my existence. And I can't really fuse this in place because I need access to my inner forearm to attach all the wires. I used to have it attached with just Velcro, but it kept opening, of course. And then I had it attached with Velcro and buckles attached to elastics, but it was a pain for my handler to attach it and detach it. So I completely scrapped that and decided to use these. This is like my fourth or fifth attempt at this. I decided to go with latches for garbage cans. These are replacement latches that you can get on AliExpress. I'll include a link in the description. So when I wear the arm just like this, it's fine. It doesn't open up or anything. It keeps its alignment. It's perfect. However, once I try wearing this with the rest of my Iron Man suit, the elbow starts torquing against the plate and it does this. It just springs open at a moment's notice because of the tension. And on top of that, it's a pain to close when I have the entire suit on. And this should serve as a PSA for any type of cosplay, not just armor cosplays or Iron Man cosplays. If you're making things that have to interact with other things, you have to test them together, not just individually, because you'll get completely different results. So one thing might work all right when it's alone, but as soon as it starts interacting with other things, it begins to fail. Another example of this would be the neck on my suit. The neck and the helmet together worked just fine. The neck was a little snug, but it still worked out just fine. As soon as I wore the entire suit together with the neck and with the helmet, I noticed that my neck sits a little higher than it should because of the suit and therefore it pushes against my helmet and would open it. So I had to completely trim the back of the neck by like a solid inch so that it wouldn't do that. Anyways, we're getting off topic. Let's get back to the arm. So there are three major things I want to fix with this. First off is that forearm plate. Second off, I want to completely redo the wiring. And it's not because it doesn't work. The problem is there are too many connections to make and it's a total pain for a handler to connect those. And I wanna make my suit as simple to put on and take off as possible. And that's one of the reasons why I picked up a set of connectors with pre-crimped wires. That way we can upgrade the wiring. And lastly, I wanna completely redo the hands. Honestly, the hands are just terrible. <laughs> For starters, I size the hands like basically perfectly to my hand, which is not good. So the fingers are from the No BS Iron Man hand file set that Walsh 3D made. And the hand itself is by Johan 3D Printmaster. It came with the Mark 7 files. So this portion is part of this back piece, but this panel is a completely separate part. So what I originally thought, which is what I ended up doing, was adding elastics to both sides. That way this could stretch and I could like put it on like a glove. The problem is I size the hand way too small. It's way too snug. So once you bring gloves into the equation and you start considering a uh, swelling of the hands, once you start getting really hot, these things are way, way too tight. It takes me like a solid five minutes to put on and take off both gloves. But I really like the hand files because Johan made the walls of the gloves super, super thin. So you can make them pretty small. So here's how I solved that issue. So I went into Mesh Mixer and I combined both the front and the back portion of the hand into one piece. And once I did that, I decided to do a plane cut to the back of the hand. That way I can make the opening way bigger and I can just slide the hand on just like that without any issue and there's still tons of room. Plus it gives me a better range of motion because I don't have a giant choke of plastic digging into my wrist. And this hole doesn't even matter because the hand plate is gonna cover this. And on top of that, not only are the fingers a little too long, meaning like the tips of my fingers end here, so I have a really hard time like moving my fingers around and like trying to grab at stuff. They're too slim, meaning my fingers get really swollen really quick and that's worsened by the reed switches I have in my fingers. Basically I have a magnet in the tip of my thumb, I have a reed switch in the tip of my finger, I put them together, uh, it activates stuff in my suit. And these are like 20 gauge wires, they're not like crazy thick, 
but they still take just enough space that it's really uncomfortable to wear. So instead, we're gonna completely get rid of the reed switches and we're gonna swap them out for tactile switches, these little buttons. I'm gonna put it inside my palm here, and whenever I bring my finger down and I really press into it, I can click the button. Plus, as the name suggests, tactile, it gives me a better feel for what I'm doing. Because sometimes I can just be sitting there with my hand just doing this for like a solid minute trying to see if I can like activate something because the magnet and the reed switch aren't perfectly making contact, so I'm just like, hoping that something happens. And I can't even tell half the time. And if that weren't bad enough, the wire management, sucks. So for the first phase of this project, we're going to be focusing on redoing the wire that leads into my arm. We're going to get rid of these plugs and we're going to swap them out for one single plug. Alrighty, so this is the end that goes in the suit. We're going to be cutting this end off and completely redoing it. Fuck your life. Go. Nice. Here we go. These are all of our wires. So I just removed the shrink tube. I'm just gonna set this aside and get a piece of paper. So what I'm gonna do is take note of what wires are what and start writing down what colors they go to. So I just checked inside the suit. This connector here is for the switch that activates the ailerons on the smoke machine. So we're gonna write that down. We're also gonna write down what colors they go to. All right, now that we have all the wires written down and their purpose and color, we can finally start wiring up the nine pin connector. So let's start by removing some of this insulation. So as you can see, this gray wire is just a housing for eight 22 gauge wires, all different colors. And with the snap of my fingers, all the wires exposed and we can finally start soldering this thing. That was genuinely painful. Oh my god! That sucked. I don't even know where to start. Yeah, no, this was, <laughs> this sucked. This really sucked to solder. But I managed, it should work. I'm like 95% sure it should work and there's no shorts. Maybe, just maybe. Anywho, the next step is going to be to solder the other end to the forearm. So I'm gonna start soldering some stuff and as I do that, I'm going to explain to you my thought process behind this. So after all that hard work, I finally came up with this. So basically you have the main connector here which goes into the wire that goes up my arm. Then you have this whole mess of wires. This one, as you can probably tell, connects to the JR plug for the NeoPixel. And then this four pin connector here connects to both of the switches in my glove. So one of them is going to be for the ailerons and the other one's gonna be for the lasers. And then you have these two wires which go to the laser pod, one of them being for the switch and the other one being for power. So if we take a look at the arm, inside you'll see there are two plugs. Now the only reason why the wire for the switch is here and not in the wires coming down my arm is because all the electronics, including the Arduino, is housed in here. So the only thing this system needs to work is power coming down my arm and then an extra wire to connect to the switch in my hand. So to make sure that the wires stay in place while being in my forearm, I decided to wrap them in a thin layer of sticky foam. So basically it's this kind of sheet foam that has a sticky backing to it. I just cut a strip out, wrapped it around the wires and glued them together. Now I'm going to glue this in place in the suit. All right, so we're getting close to a final product. I'm just gonna do a quick test to make sure that everything works. And if it does, I'm going to cover this in craft foam just to cover it up. So I just slapped all the batteries back into the suit. Now all I have to do is plug that main wire to the wire on the arm and we can start testing everything. Three, two, one, here goes nothing. All right, so the servo turned on on this and the light in the hand just went on. Now I didn't bother soldering any of the leads for the switches. I'm just gonna make contact with each of the leads and we'll see what happens. There we go. And the lasers are working just fine. That's awesome. Dope, so the lead for the lasers work. Now to test the back. So the red and the black together. Aha. Nice. So it works. Fantastic. So we can unplug this and start working on yeah, getting everything nice and snug in here. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. The covering is pretty good. The wires are all nicely tucked away. I also tested how it would be to plug this into my arm and it works great. 
The only thing we're not gonna be able to do today are these leads for the switches in my glove because I need to build the gloves first. So we might as well start dismantling this whole latch system so we can start brainstorming a new way of attaching this. So I just grabbed a pair of pliers and we're just gonna go right into it. When I fuse these in place, I basically used some super glue to set them where I wanted them. And then I went in there with my soldering iron and some scrap PLA filament and just fused into the plastic. So, I don't think we're gonna break anything, but we're about to find out. Oh, there we go. Nice. That actually came out much easier than I thought it would. <laughs> Noise. <sighs> nice. Voila. Yeah. Now I'm gonna jump into Tinkercad. I'm gonna try designing some sort of locking mechanism for this thing. A few moments later. So it's the very next day and I just got done installing the locking mechanism in the arm and it works so well. And it's a super simple design. It's two 3D printed parts and a quick release pin. So one of the 3D printed parts is attached to the forearm. The other one is attached to the inner forearm plate. And then you have this quick release pin which attaches the both of them together. All it took was a few prototypes just to test out some of the measurements and then I installed it. Now here's how it works. You basically pull on the quick release pin, taking it out. You can then put it back into the first slot. That way you don't have to realign it. Slide your hand through like this, close it up, line up the plate, and then just push on it. And now it's locked. And then you just need to stick your hand in there. It's pretty easy to grab the ring, all things considered, and just pull it out and the arm opens up just like that. So now I'm just gonna give it a test with the rest of the arm on. And it's a lot easier now that I have all those latches removed to hook in these buckles. There we go, that's the second one. This back in there and slide this whole thing on. So basically this would be open to plug this in without a problem. This closes back up and then boom, voila, it's on. And it just barely flexes. You see, as I curl my arm up, there's like maybe a millimeter or two where the gap opens up, but this is nothing compared to the other iterations of this. This is absolutely phenomenal. I was debating adding some extra magnets just so that this plate aligns correctly, but I don't even think I'm gonna need them in the end. The only thing I have left to do on this arm is to fuse the prints in place because right now it's only holding with CA glue or super glue. So if I grab a soldering iron with some scrap PLA filament, I should be able to weld this into the print and make a more strong bond. And now let's install this in the other forearm. Ah. Ah. There we go. Ah. Super, now everything is gutted. We just need to get rid of the screws so we can keep those. And next, all we have to do is sand the inside of that, sand these two 3D printed parts, and we can start gluing these in. And there you have it, everybody. Two fully upgraded arms for my Iron Man suit. And the only thing we have left to do now is upgrading the gloves. So join me next video where we're going to be fully printing, assembling, and painting those new gloves. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll include links down below to all my socials as well as a link to my Kofi where you can make a donation to support me in my future projects. And with that said, I hope to see you in the next one. It feels so buff right now. Just. Mm. Mm.